Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. Today, we will be reviewing the Canadian independent film and a 2012 Oscar nominee for Best Foreign Film, Monsignor Lazar, directed and written by Philippe Falandio. I'm standing in the garden of Inwood Local, a cozy wine bar and beer garden located here on Broadway between 207th and Isham Streets in Upper Manhattan. Inwood is considered the northernmost neighborhood on the island of Manhattan. Rich with history of the city, you'll find the Dykeman House, the oldest farmhouse in Manhattan here, and located in Fort Tryon Park is the Cloisters, a branch of the Metropolitan Museum of Art which is devoted to medieval art and culture. You can also pay your respects at the 9-11 Memorial Garden, which is a tribute to the 22 locals who lost their lives in that tragic event. But right now, let's explore the wonderful craft beers and wine selections on offer at this charming neighborhood favorite. So can you tell us a little bit about Inwood Local? When was it established and, and what is it all about? Yeah, um, well, I'm pretty new. Like I started working here in January, but uh, Inwood Local has been here since uh, June of last year. Uh, so we're almost a year old. Um, it's a beautiful beer garden, as you can see. It's great food, great fun, good people. Um, uh, an assortment of wines, it's, it's just a smorgasbord of good food and good drinks. So um, brands that we carry are from everywhere from Goose Island to we have a local wine from Long Island. So I mean like, you know, the beer and wine selections are, are uh, very intricate and it's always something new and something different. But here you have like uh, 15 different big bottle selections. 20 to 25 small bottle selections and then 16 taps to choose from. So I guess it's just more of an array or an assortment of different beers to choose from and experience. And you know, just the people in Inwood really embraced um, Inwood Local, which is our motto, keep it local. So we've had everything from like engagement parties wow. to uh, birthday parties to all types of celebration here. Because it really is like a family. Uh, between even the staff members, it feels like a family, and even a lot of the um, regulars that we have. Like you get to know people and you just become a part of each other's life. So well, it's a really you. nice community. Thank you so much, Fabian, for You're welcome. allowing me to question you about Inwood Local. It seems like an awesome place. Oh, it's a good time. Indeed. And now let's meet our panelists. To my far left, I have Patrice Francois. Patrice is an actress, screenwriter, director, currently working on her first screenplay, Love Lost. Next to her, we have Carmen Lishu. Carmen is a licensed real estate broker and talk show host and lectures on real estate since 2001. And closing out our panel, we have Aaron Parks. Aaron is a digital media professional working in New York City in production. Today's film we'll be reviewing is the Canadian independent film Monsignor Lazar, written and directed by Philippe Falando. So, what did you feel were the main themes of this film? I would have to say death, dealing with death, coping with death, how to get, how to express your, your emotions and, um, yeah, death from death. <laughs> I definitely think uh, one of the themes is that of just how destructive we as human beings can be. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a discussion of violence that ran throughout the film. There was uh, this, this undercurrent of fear that you felt from all of the characters throughout the film. So just this kind of overall theme of, of human destructiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the theme was just everyday life, how, how people live every day, their lives every day, how they deal with um, different scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yes, I also think just the universality of dealing with death, that no matter what age, you still have to go through your process, that kind of thing. Suicide is a difficult subject to handle in a film. Do you feel it was effectively handled here? I definitely would say so. Uh, it, there are a lot of shots and, and scenes that you have to really decide on. You have to really uh, make certain decisions as to how far uh, you want to let characters go with their emotions and, and displaying that and and I felt uh, as though the film did a really good job as uh, 
putting it out there on the table, but then leaving some uh, for, for the audience, leaving, leaving some of the interpretation up to the audience as far as uh, what the characters were going through mentally. Is this film an observation of how we relate to children today? Definitely. Um, you, you see it a lot in the film. Like it was mentioned throughout the film how to n not touch a student. Like you shouldn't touch a student because of the world that we live in, the, the crazy world that we live in. We're always fearing that if a, a male te figure, a teacher, is so interested in a child, what are what are his intentions? Like what is he up to? And throughout the film, it was don't touch a child, don't embrace the child, even to encourage him. And I think that that definitely was a, a key point throughout the film. I, I felt that only a few people were um, affected by the, the suicide. Erin? Uh, just really quickly, I, I would say that it was very accurate in how we relate to children today because you also see that the adults are kind of selfish in, in the way that they deal with the situation and with the children. Uh, you, you see the teachers not really wanting to talk about it because it upsets them as opposed to doing something that may actually help the kids heal. So uh, I, I definitely saw that in, in a way that directly uh, relates to the real adult-child dynamic. I definitely felt that there was a lack of correspondence between um, student, uh, students and teachers. Mm -hmm. And as we see, which is a major issue, there's not so much talking with children, but talking at them. And sure, I thought it was definitely. a great portrayal of that and how that may negatively affect dealing or coping with something. Um, this is an understated, low budget production. Um, does it come across as such or um, what does or doesn't make it feel that way? I definitely didn't get that feeling at all that it was low budget or, or you know, just kind of a, a shot in the dark. And, and I guess because of what we've discussed here today is that the subject matter, A, being so difficult, was handled really well. Mm. And that what needed to be said was said, and then where you needed to feel the silence, it was felt. So it was just really, uh, the rhythm was really good. Mm -hmm. Yes. The rhythm was really good. Yeah, definitely. The trees, you want to try I didn't see, I didn't feel that the film was low budget at all. I mean, the, the feel of the film, the movie, and the way it was shot, you really couldn't tell that it was a low budget film. I mean, it was done very well. And Carmen? I, I said it was a low budget. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, I said that. But also because... No, why uh, did you feel that? Because of locations, because of performance? Location, because of there's no fluff, you know, just plain, very straight to the point, that thing. Mm -hmm. But also, I have to give the, uh, comment the uh, director? director for at least making an effort. Did you say he had experience? This was his experience. I don't, I don't think so. Someone said this was I'm experience. actually not sure. It, this is actually from based on a play. Yeah, one uh, act a play. One act play, yeah. just with a monologue, one man play, actually. Yeah. So, right. But you know, any uh, because now I'm, I'm in television. Anybody who, who make it makes an effort to to put a film or any piece together, I commend that because it's not easy work. Yeah. But don't you think so, the fluff would have taken away from the film, would have made it something completely different? No. Not real, not realistic, no. not... No, really. to me, I, I, needed, I needed more. I, I, um, uh, if, if I weren't there specifically to review the movie, I would have left. Mm. I was not impressed with the movie at all. So that leads me to my next question. Did you like or dislike this? <laughs> <laughs> so we know how far it feels. I really appreciated this film. I appreciated the director's way of showing the characters, of developing each character. Um, I, I love the, the look of the film, I, the, 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 the colors of the film, because of the direction the director took. Indeed, Aaron. Yeah, so I enjoy the film, and I had a moment. No one got up and left mm -hmm. immediately. Mm. You know, it was. I think maybe one other one person left, and then and then I was like, okay, I don't know what everybody's waiting on, but I need to leave. Like, yeah. I need to, I need <laughs> to get some <laughs> air. I need to, you know. But it, I, I kind of think that that also speaks to the film in that, you know, people weren't really ready to leave. And so, are, were there any performances on that note that stood out to you, and why? I enjoyed Simon's performance, mm -hmm. the, the growth that he had. Um, 
the way he dealt with the death, yeah. and I thought his performance was, was great. Yeah, that was that was for me the CEO. Then. <laughs> yeah, that did it for me. I know this is going to sound a little odd, but outside of the obvious of uh, the the main characters, uh, Simon Alice and um, and Shio Lazar, I really liked Vic. <laughs> I really liked Vic because I don't. I, I kept seeing him throughout the film. And the gym teacher? No, he was actually he was the te- the student who was ostracized. Oh yes, indeed. Uh, by oh, Simon, yes. even. Yes. And so I I also I, I liked that uh, because I, I feel like it showed how destructive uh, this the destructive path that Simon was on, and mm-hmm. so you you kind of need that. Uh, that other character to be just as strong so that that really plays well. Yeah. And so I definitely uh, liked his performance and, and then there was a cute moment uh, With the when they were studying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then him, you know, uh, telling his story as well with, with dealing with, with death, with death mm-hmm. and, and the suicide of it all. So I just, I, I thought that he handled um, Again, and they all were handling these really adult themes mm-hmm. um, as children, and so it just came across as really amazing. Did you have any, yeah. anything you wanted to add? Yep, I, I liked the interaction of the children in the classroom at every, at every session that they had, because it shows you that children are children in any part of the world you go, how they yeah. behave. Mm-hmm. If you're in America, if you're in, in, in London or in Canada, children behave the same way. Mm-hmm. That's I true. like that. So I mean, editing cool. and pacing? The pace was a, a bit slow. You felt like maybe there needed to be a little bit more action between um, between the teachers and the students, that mm-hmm. it was all dialogue, and if something had happened here or happened there, that it would have picked up the pace of the film. Well, maybe that's what I meant rather than saying fluff. Maybe I needed more action. Mm-hmm. More action, yeah. okay. I think rather than saying fluff. Pacing and editing. As, as far as... Uh, I, I liked it. I've, I've you know, I <laughs> I had a moment. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the way that it was done and and how it was put together and and for me the slow moments meant something. I you know you were able to sit in the moment. I I enjoy I enjoy that in a film. And um, what about the sound and score? Did you notice any? I love that scene where um, he was dancing. That yeah. was a beautiful scene where the music came in and it was a little hip and funky and then it turned to this Middle Eastern kind of belly dancing and then you see him dancing and I really, I really love that scene with the score. Yeah. Indeed. Um, now that you ask me, I really didn't notice. There was, there was, there was almost no music, which is weird. And, and then also, as you guys were talking about the pacing, uh, when there isn't, when when there's no music there, that seems that makes scenes scenes seem <laughs> long. <laughs> but they also it also makes them seem stronger because you're not, my emotions aren't being guided. I'm just allowed to experience. Right, something. right. Um, I guess everyone other than Carmen, if you were not on this panel, would you have gone to see this film? No. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I, I would have, because uh, of late I've um, found this love for foreign films. I feel like foreign films are just more realistic. You you get more out of that. So with foreign films, I, I absolutely love foreign films. It's taken us somewhere that we don't usually get to go with the movies that we have here in the States. Okay, and yeah. I, I have to say no as well, uh, not because I didn't like it now that I've seen it, but because I am not as attuned to the foreign film world. Mm. And so for me, this, uh, you know, is a trip that I, I don't usually make, and, yeah. but I, I'm glad I did. Well, thank you so much, ladies. We're out of time for this sure. session. Thank you. I want to thank you for your fascinating comments on this film. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being a fabulous host. <laughs> yeah. I want to take a moment to thank Gus Anton and Fabian for allowing us to shoot here at Inwood Local Wine Bar and Beer Garden. Again, today's film we were reviewing is the Canadian independent film Monsignor Lazar, written and directed by Philippe Parandil. Um, be sure to check this out and more at www.letstalkfilm.com, which is also available for your mobile device. Until next time, I'm your host, Stephanie Aline. Keep watching and keep talking film.